volcano near the capital land, the air, road. and sea travel shall be restricted. More than 200,000 informal settlers will also be displaced. President Rodrigo Duterte did outline the pioneer to heal as one act. It only took Typhoon Banco a few hours to submerge more than half. We had to do this to change the mindset of people. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources led the launching of the massive rehabilitation program, The Battle for Manila Bay, on January 26, 2019. The historic launch was done with a march along Rojas Boulevard from Luneta to the cleanup area at Baywalk in Manila, followed by a simultaneous launching program in Guagua, Pampanga and in Barangay Zapote in Bacoor, Cavite. Since then, the DENR regional offices in the National Capital Region, Region 3 Central Luzon, and Region 4A Calabarzon have been working doubly hard to accomplish the common mission to bring back the former glory of Manila Bay. When the COVID-19 pandemic broke out in the first quarter of 2020, the work became more challenging. But that did not hinder the department in delivering its mandate. The DENR workforce did their job and well despite the threat of COVID-19. And while focused on the rehabilitation of Manila Bay, the DENR field offices in the National Capital Region, Central Luzon and Calabarzon Region have accomplished much, even surpassing their targets in the implementation of the priority programs of the DENR. Isang mga kalikasang pagbati mula sa DNR National Capital Region, halina't ating balikan ng accomplishments ng DNR National Capital Region para sa taong 2020. Simulan natin sa Manila Bay Rehabilitation Program. January 26, 2020, ginanap ang unang anibarasaryo ng Bagan for Manila Bay. Kaugnay nito, nanawagan ng DENR and CR ng mga cleanup volunteers para sa opasyon. Para sa Phase 1 ng Manila Bay Rehabilitation Program o Clean Up and Water Quality Improvement, Nag-monitor at nagpatrol ang DNR field offices ng higit sa apat na daang waterways. Nagsagawa rin ng higit sa tatlong daan ng anim na pumutin at activities ang DNR NCR na dinaluhan ng nagpas sa pitong libong volunteers. Higit sa dalawang put isang libo at limang daan sako naman ng mga basura ang nakolekta na may kabuang timbang na anim na daan at apat na put tatlong libong kilo. Para sa phase 2 naman ng Manila Bay Rehabilitation Program, ang resettlement at rehabilitation, naglagay ang DNR and CR ng mga trash drops sa iba't ibang waterways dito sa Metro Manila. Nagfabricate din ang labing dalawang prototype units ng trash collector roughs ang DNR and CR na magagamit ng mga estero rangers sa kanilang daily cleanups. Nakapagbigay rin ang tanggapan ng sampung habal-habal o pajak bikes sa iba't ibang barangay sa Tulyahan Tinajeros River System. Sinimulan din ng DNR NCR ang construction ng Baseco Boardwalk sa Port Area sa Manila. Sa kasalukuyan, 270 meters na ang tapos dito, 110 meters ng taong 2019 at karagdagang 160 meters naman ngayong taon. Sa Phase 3 naman ng rehabilitation, ang protection and sustainment, nagtanim ang DNR NCR na higit sa 7,000 at 500 ng mangro sa 1,000 square meters ng Baseco Lagoon. Sa kabila ng umiira na community quarantine at pagiging sentro ng pandemya, nagawa pa rin ng DENR and CR ng learning activities sa pamamagitan ng webinars. Kabilang sa mga paksang tinalakay ay ang RA9003, RA9275, State of Manila Bay, Climate Change, Safety Protocols in Handling Healthcare Waste at iba pa. Dumako naman tayo sa Enhanced National Greening Program and Watershed Management Program ng DNR and CR. Sa ilalim ng Enhanced National Greening Program or ENGP, 114 hectares ng NGP sites ang patuloy na pinangangalagaan ng DNR and CR. Nasa 94% naman ng survival rate ng mga naitanim na puno at halaman. Sa ilalim din ng ENGP, 
nakapag-produce ang BNR and CR ng 1,075,361 quality seedlings sa mechanized forest nursery nito at 30,235 cuttings or seedlings naman ang nai-produce sa clonal nursery nito. Sa watershed rehabilitation and management, tatlong units ng automated water stations or AWS ang minimaintain sa Lamesa watershed at isang AWS ang nakatakdang i-install sa barangay North Fairview sa Quezon City. Para naman sa intensified forest protection and anti-illegal logging program ng DNR-NCR ay nakapagtala ng mga apprehensions and confiscations ng mga illegal logs. May kabuwa 142,287.46 cubic meter na iba't ibang local imported logs at 72,931.04 kilograms of treated posts ang na-monitor. Dagdag pa rito ay nakapag-monitor din ng 214 wood-based establishments at 131 chains of permittees. Para sa cave management, patuloy na pinangahalagaan ng DNR-NCR ang Apugan Cave, ang nag-iisang natural cave sa Metro Manila. Nagawan na rin ito ng cave management plan alinsunod na rin sa direktiba ng Biodiversity Management Bureau. Para sa Heritage Tree Program, isang puno ng balete at akasya sa National Center for Mental Health sa Mandalunyong ang naproklama bilang karagdagang heritage trees dito sa Metro Manila. Patuloy rin ang naging operasyon ng Wildlife Traffic Monitoring Unit or WTMU sa Naiya at ng Pico Port Area, Manila sa kasagsaga ng Enhanced Community Quarantine sa Metro Manila. Nakapag-inspect at nakapag-monitor ng 23 wildlife farm permittees, 4 na zoo, 174 certificate of wildlife registration at 995 wildlife permits. Para sa Coastal Marine Ecosystems Rehabilitation Program naman, patuloy ang naging maintenance activities ng DNR and CR sa 26 hectares of mangrove areas sa Tanza Marine Tree Park sa Navotas at 3 hectares of mangrove areas sa barangay ng Balit Malabon. Para naman sa improved land administration and management program ng DNR and CR, nakapag-issue ngayong taon ng 127 residential free patents. Dagdag dito, nagsagawa rin ng DNR and CR ng 389 free lot survey para sa mga residente ng Metro Manila. Para naman sa COVID-19 response, inilunsad ng DNR National Capital Region ang Heal as One Community Outreach Project. Layunin ito makapag-abot ng tulong para sa mga frontliners sa paraan ng pamilgay ng PPEs, relief goods, fruit packs at assorted logs simula buwan ng Marso hanggang Mayo. Upang tiyaking ligtas para sa lahat na pumupunta sa tanggapan nito sa banta ng COVID-19, bumuo at nagpatupad ng health and safety protocols ang DNR and CR at sunod sa direktiba ng DOH RIATF. Kabilang narito ang paglalagay ng disinfection stop para sa mga sasakyan na papasok at lalabas ng National Ecology Center. Naglagay rin ng mga signages sa iba't ibang bahagi ng tanggapan na nagpapaalala na sumunod sa health and safety protocols. Mayroon din itinay ang client's waiting area din, protective acetate para sa queuing system ng mga frontliners ng tanggapan, at aluminum sink washing area. Tiniyak rin ng management na may sapat na supply ng PPEs, thermal scanner, foot bath at alcohol ang lahat ng ito. Sinimulan din ng DNR NCR ang automation at online transaction schemes bilang dagdag sa preventive measures laban sa COVID at pagpapabilis ng servisyo sa gitna ng pandemya. Kabilang sa mga ito ay ang DNAMS o DNR NCR Attendance Monitoring System, DNR NCR Hotline Connect, Online Appointment System, Queuing System at Online Payment Transaction System in partnership with the Land Bank. Ngayong taon, inilunsag rin ng DNR NCR ang kauna-unahang gawat taga-ilog, the search for the most improved estero in Metro Manila. Layunin itong bigyang pugay ang mga ginawang hakbang ng ating mga LGUs para sa paglilinis ng mga estero sa Metro Manila na may kinalawan sa rehabilitasyon ng Manila Bay. Magtatagal ang pati pala hanggang Desyembe at ang parangal para sa mga nagogi ay sa Enero 2021. Bagamat may pandemya, naging masigasig at mapagpunyagi ang mga opisyal at kawani ng DNR-NCR upang matiyak ang pagbibigay ng dekalidad na serbisyo sa publiko. Isang taon na naman ang lumipas. Sama-sama nating harapin ang susunod na taon tungo sa isang ligtas at makakalikas ang Pilipinas. Twenty twenty has been a challenging year for all of us, but despite the global health crisis, the DENR Region Three has managed and significantly contributed for the protection and conservation of our environment and natural resources. 
we have geared up to the challenges of restrictions and limitations of the COVID-19 pandemic and made valuable efforts to the 10 priority programs of Environment Secretary Roy Simak. On the cleanup and rehabilitation of Manila Bay, DNR Region 3 was able to identify and protect four swimmable areas in Bataan and Pampanga and has delineated 73 kilometers of priority easement in five provinces in the region. Six MBRTF OPCEN are also operationalized and we have hired 293 Estero Rangers primarily tasked to conduct cleanup and monitoring of rivers, beaches, and other water bodies. We have also strengthened the enforcement of our environmental laws by monitoring 1,962 manufacturing firms and establishments. This resulted in the issuance of five cease and desist orders to airing firms. Regular water sampling was also done in our monitoring stations to check water quality improvement. 50 floating trash traps were also installed in major rivers and tributaries in Bulacan, Pampanga, and Bataan that prevented more than 30 tons of solid waste from reaching the coastline of Manila Bay. We have also conducted a total of 7,026 river and coastal cleanups that resulted in the collection of 5,420 tons of solid waste. On the Clean Air Program, as of November, our EMB Region 3 has monitored the clean air law compliance of 1,451 industries in the region and have resulted in the issuance of 132 Notice of Violations. They have established a total of 9 air quality sampling stations. Six of these are real-time, while the rest are manually operated. On the Clean Water Program, 894 firms were monitored and we have issued 162 Notice of Violation to erring firms. We have also continuously monitored the water quality management area in the region and the implementation of ADAPT Anestero program. On solid waste management, 13 solid waste management plans were evaluated and endorsed for approval in compliance with the Ecological Solid Waste Management Law. The region has 7 existing material recovery facilities, 13 sanitary landfills, and 11 open and controlled dump sites. These are regularly being monitored and inspected by our EMB personnel. This year, DENR Region 3 has produced more than 700,000 seedlings of bamboo and timber commodities for our reforestation activities. We have also established 728 hectares of new plantations in Bulacan. A total of 122 hectares of plantation have been established in the region since 2011, and these sites are continuously being maintained and protected. Our combined efforts, in collaboration with local government units, civil society organizations, the Philippine National Police and the military have resulted in the apprehension of more than 211,000 board feet of illegal lumber and over 1,000 sacks of charcoal worth more than 10 million pesos, including the seizure of 61 chainsaws and 84 various types of conveyances. We have also filed 39 cases on forestry and night pass laws in various courts in the region involving 95 individuals. Of course, we are not only enforcing our forestry laws, but also our wildlife law. This resulted in the apprehension of 39 species of various animals, including bearded dragon, tarantulas, and monitor lizards. On protected areas, caves, and wetland management, Region 3 has operationalized 65 protected area management boards or PAMBs, which are crucial in the protection and management of protected areas. We have also maintained 21 ecotourism facilities, assessed 9 cave systems, and established 8 critical habitats in the region. On wildlife conservation, more than 1,200 wildlife permits, clearances, and certifications were issued, and we were able to monitor 32 holders of wildlife farm permits and 183 holders of Certificate of Wildlife Registration. 
on coastal and marine ecosystems rehabilitation, DENR Region 3 has continuously monitored the Masinloc Oyun Bay protected landscape and seascape in Zambales and other coastal areas in the region. DENR Region 3 was able to appraise the value of 44 shore areas and has distributed a total of 2,100 residential free patents or land titles to landless farmers. Our MGB Region 3 was able to conduct vulnerability and risk assessments in seven local government units. They have also updated the geohazard maps on seven LGUs and have conducted groundwater assessments in two LGUs. Twelve mining agreements, contracts and permits were issued and we have issued seven cease and desist orders to airing mining and quarrying firms. DNR Region 3 has been implementing the Forest Land Management Project or FMP since 2012. This year, we have been able to rehabilitate more than 14,000 hectares of the denuded portions of the Pantabangan Karanglan watershed in Nueva Ecija. Last month, we inaugurated the 55-meter hanging bridge in Karanglan Town that will be essential in our rehabilitation efforts and allow economic productivity. FMP has supported the livelihood of some 33 people's organizations and the protection of the more than 44,000 hectare Pantabangan Karanglan watershed. As we battle the COVID-19 pandemic, DNR Region 3 has donated some 2 million pesos worth of food packs, personal protective equipment, alcohol, and vegetable seedlings to local communities and medical frontliners in the region, including the donation of 81,000 board feet of confiscated lumber for building temporary quarantine facilities in the affected areas in central Luzon. Sama-sama, tulong-tulong sa pangangalaga ng kalikasan. Clean Air Program Firms Monitor 150 Issuance of Notice of Violations 243 Air Quality Sampling Station Operated and Maintained 7 Number of Firms Compliant to Standards with Reports Submitted CEMS and Regulatory Monitoring 1 Clean Water Program Establishments Monitored with Reports Submitted 541 Issuance of Notice of Violations 306 Water Quality Management Assessment Action Plan Formulated and Monitored 2. Priority Water Bodies Monitored 4. Nagalinaw Project Solid Waste Management 10 year solid waste management plans evaluated and endorsed. 42. Functional existing material recovery facilities supported with recorded increase in waste diversion. 12. Assessed sites. 87. 10 year solid waste management plan monitored and assessed. 7. Sanitary landfills monitored. 6. Open and controlled dump sites inspected. 64. Enhanced National Greening Program Seedling Production 7,111,250 Site Preparation and Planting 222 hectares Area Maintained and Protected 13,914 hectares Site Assessment 3,000 hectares Hiring of Extension Officers 95 Seed Production Area or Individual Plus Trees Maintained 6. Clonal Nursery Maintained 1. Seedlings Produced 20,000 Mechanized and Modernized Forest Nursery 2. Seedlings Produced 7 million Soil Conservation and Watershed Management including River Basin Management and Development Small Water Impounding Structure Constructed 100.01% Intensified Forest Protection and Anti-Illegal Logging Motorcycle Procured 19. GPS or Equipment Procured 8. Communication Equipment Procured 1. Software Procured 2. Maintenance of Lookout Tower 5. Vehicles, Equipment and Other Implements Apprehended Through Proper Channels with Incidents Report Submitted to Regional Office 212. Volume of Apprehended Forest Products Including Non-Timmer Forest Products with Incidents Report Submitted to Regional Office 106,836 Apprehended conveyances hall 188 Administrative confiscation proceedings report carried out within the prescription period 
81. Confiscated forest products inventory 52,845. Forest products confiscated 86,684. Legal officers hired 11. Legal assistants hired 7. Identification, survey, and mapping of fire prone areas 3. Forest protection officers hired 64. Patrol route prepared and conducted 7,162. Biodiversity conservation for proclaimed protected areas boundary established 24 kilometers for legislated PAs management zoning with maps 71 survey and registration of protected area occupants conducted 8 biodiversity monitoring system 28 protected area management board meetings 48 minutes of meeting and pambi resolution submitted to bmb 52 ecotourism facilities maintained 16 wetland profile 2 cave assessment report 11 wildlife rescue centers maintained 1 wildlife permits issued 27. Wildlife traffic monitoring units mobilized. 5. Wildlife enforcement officers deputized or mobilized. 1. 100% of the holders of certificate of wildlife registration in the region monitored relative to their compliance with the terms and conditions of the wildlife permit. 94. Coastal and marine ecosystems rehabilitation. Number of protected areas assessed on water quality parameters. 1. Number of marine protected areas network strengthened. 2. MPA habitats regularly monitored, surveyed, and MPA regular operational activities conducted. 4. Protected area suitability assessment conducted for initial components. 1. Biodiversity friendly enterprise monitored per coastal municipality or potential BDFP supported and assisted. 3. LGUs provided with technical assistance. 2. Special events conducted. 7. Improved land administration and management. Agricultural free patent issued and transmitted to ROD or issued 654. Residential free patent issued and transmitted to ROD or issued 2,329. Resolution of land disputes or cases. 9. Special patents for LGUs, NJAs, except school sites, application with CSW and complete documents reviewed and endorsed to region. 5. Special patents under Section 4 of RA 10023. 48. Inspection, verification and approval of surveys using land administration and management system. 961. GU hazards, groundwater assessment and responsible mining, vulnerability and risk assessment. 11. Updating of 1 to 10,000 scale maps. 11. Karst subsidence assessment. 1. IEC to LGUs conducted. 6. Groundwater resource assessment. 2. Responsible mining. Agreements or contracts, permits issued. 2. Other mining related permits issued. 1. Minahang Bayan sites assisted or identified. 1. Proposed Minahang Bayan sites endorsed to DENR through MJB Central Office. 1. Proposed Minahang Bayan sites endorsed to DENR by Provincial or City Mining Regulatory Board. 7. Cease and desist orders implemented. 3. All these and more happened in 2020. While the world is beleaguered with the pandemic, community quarantine was in effect and movement is constrained. The DNR did not stop from delivering quality service to our nation for our environment.